welcome back to my channel, Stacey O Designs, where we talk about everything sublimation. If you're new, please go and hit that subscribe button so you can stay updated on all of my upcoming videos. So today I am talking a little bit more about the DTF hack with sublimation. I have the DTF film from Yamation, but I also have glitter DTF film. And I particularly like this product because I'm not a fan of sublimating onto the glitter HTV. It's just too heavy and too stiff for what I'm comfortable with. So I don't really use that process very much of sublimating onto glitter HTV. So I really like this and it has a little bit of a sparkle, not too big, it's not overwhelming, but it's definitely a little mwah little something. So I'm going to try both of these. We're going to do a test. I'm going to try both of these with sublimation. And then I'm going to try both of these with inkjet, which is a pretty new hack that has come out. It's like a hack of a hack. So we're going to try both of them and see how they measure up to each other. All right, let's go make a project. Okay, so I'm printing out my first design. This will be glitter going on a light blue cotton shirt. And I print out a Photoshop. I have an Epson 7720. I'm gonna go to print settings. Um, I already have a preset that I've created called Yamation DTF. So I'm just going to set it to eight, whoop, eight and a half by 11, which is my paper size. And I found, I put it on high quality plain paper. And this gives me a better print without roller marks. And the quality is at high. I go up here to more options, select, normally it's selected on automatic. I click on custom, click advanced, click on color controls, Adobe RGB 2.2, I have the brightness at nine, the contrast at seven, saturation 15, and density at four. And now I'm gonna just print this. Oh, of course I have it on Mira and the high speed checked off. Okay, so here is my new print and I'm using the Yamation DTF powder. Just going to pour a little bit over it. And spread it around. So when you're using any brand of powder for DTF, you want to make sure that you are ventilated. I currently have a window open and a fan blow, blowing through my hallway. Um, and have some sort of container because this powder has the tendency to go everywhere. And I roll it over quite a few times. I don't think it's actually necessary to do it as much as I do. But I just like to make sure that every little spot is coated well. off the excess and now it's completely covered with the powder. So now I'm going to cure it. Curing simply means to heat the powder until it changes form. You want to cure it until the powder turns into a gel. Optimally, you don't want to see any white powder. It turns sort of shiny when the curing process is reached. I just place it under my heat press at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes. And you don't close the press. You just hover the top plate over the film. Um, side note is the time depends on the distance of your platen from the film. 
So if you have an adjustable heat press, you can play around with this and your time can change. Here are the results. This is the glitter with sublimation. And now here are the testers. This is the glitter with sublimation. And now this is the glitter with the inkjet. So you can see the color difference already. And here is the regular Yamation film with sublimation and with the inkjet. So you could see distinct color differences. Um, even though I use the exact same settings, let's see how they press. Okay, so I have my t-shirt ready to go. It is a Gildan Heavy Cotton. And I'm just going to place my image on about right there. All right, here we go. I have my image. I'm going to cover it with some parchment and press it at 325 for 50 seconds. And here's that image. And I'm just gonna take it off and let it cool. So while that is cooling, I'm just gonna pre-press this really quick. While that's cooling, I'm going to press the testers. So here I just have a piece of, I just have a piece of cotton, white cotton that I got at Joann's. Um, I used it when I was making masks during COVID. So I'm gonna cut this part off where I told myself which is which, and I'm just going to write it directly on the, so. Okay, so I have them all set up here. I did all the same image so you could see the difference between all of them. I my with my regular sublimation printer on Yamation film, then my sublimation printer with the glitter film, then the inkjet printer with the regular film and the inkjet printer with the glitter film. Same thing, 50 seconds. Okay, it's been 50 seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna move these to the side and let these cool. And let's see how we did with this shirt. not quite cool yet and maybe that's why it's fighting me a little I'm gonna give it just another couple minutes to cool off okay I let it cool a little bit more and it's much easier to pull off now so there we go let me get some light on this and zoom in So this is the glitter and I purposely did blue because I knew I was doing a blue shirt because it is still sublimation. Um, it's not DTF. So your colors still do interact with the color shirt behind it. So if this was a white shirt, obviously anything goes, but um, 
Can you see the glitter? So I'm going to give it just one more press. And this will be completely done. And I just like to press it again at the same 325, but only for about 20 seconds. Okay, so now this, actually I just put it on my press and it warmed up again, but this is now cool. So let's peel them off. Nice, easy peel. That's the regular, regular sublimation with regular film. Now here's sublimation with the glitter film. So I do find the glitter needs to be super cool when it's being peeled, but they, they all feel good. And here is the inkjet. This is the one I really wanted to test out. Easy peel. So that's the inkjet regular. Looks decent. Colors are a little bit different. And this is the inkjet glitter. Oh, see now that it's cooler. I think once I took it off the press, it was easier to peel. So let's look at all of these together. Let's look at the inkjets first. The inkjet regular and sublimation regular. So the first obvious problem is the colors are off. I used the same print settings, same color settings, the sub obviously way more vibrant. However, this isn't terrible. Not terrible, and it looks good. Now, the glitter. So, the inkjet, the inkjet glitter, I mean, they both have that slight glitter. It's not that heavy HTV glitter, but it's that slight glitter that gives it a little something cute. It's so hard to see on camera, but it is there. Um, I don't know if I would, I would have to be in a pinch to use the inkjet for this, but I love how these look. And let's talk about what I've learned through this process. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I just wanted to do a recap and talk about the results and give you some tips that I've learned through this whole process of a few months now using DTF film. So this is the glitter, right? It's very hard to see the glitter on camera, but this is the glitter. I've noticed with the glitter that I can see it in person, but I have to really take a good look on a, on a colored shirt to see that this glitter is glitter. Here is the glitter. This is just a test shirt that I did if you saw my TikTok. This is the image that I did on my TikTok. Let me shine a little light on this. This is glittery. So I'm feeling the DTF glitter works best on white. Not that it doesn't work on this. You can see it on this, but it's very apparent on the white. Just like how sublimation works better on white. So now for this test, let me get this light out of here, sorry for this test. Regular sublimation, great. Glitter, great. These are the ink jets. Decent if you're in a pinch, but they definitely worked and they feel good. So I am going to wash this a minimum of 
I don't know, seven times. So make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to post the results in a YouTube short. So give me a couple of days and I'm going to keep washing it and then drying it and washing it and drying. I'm not going to put it in the dryer. I'm going to wash it on cold with detergent seven times air dry. So it might take me a couple of days. So what I have learned with this whole process, the key, the absolute key is the melting. So there's some directions that say two to three minutes. There's some directions that say 15 minutes. It's not so much the time as it is your result. So at first I was doing them for whatever it was, five minutes, three minutes, I forgot now. And what I thought was melted was not melted until I did it for 15 minutes. And then I saw the difference between melted and not melted. So it depends how close your platen is to the film. That's definitely a determination on how long it will take to melt. I've been sticking with 400. And at 400, where I keep my platen, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. I did, for one of these, to cure one of these, I did lower my platen and it took much less time. So that's up to you. Personally, I like curing them low and slow, like I'm making sauce. Um, it prevents it from overcooking because if you overcook, you'll start seeing cracks before you even press it. And we definitely don't want that. So if you have the time, cook it slow and you'll get great results every time. Like that's kind of the secret is the melting. So I hope you um, enjoyed this video and I hope you learned. And I am definitely going to be doing more DTF because I really like it. And since my first video about DTF, I've washed that a number of times at this point. Like, I, I've lost count. And there has been no discoloration. There's been no fading. There's been no peeling and no cracking. So enjoy this. Enjoy the process. Enjoy trying something new. And make sure you check below for the discount code. All right, and have a great day. Enjoy your crafting.